Now here's an example of how you can retrieve the uh, notification history in Datalink. Uh, this is the add-in to Excel, PyDatalink. It has, as you can see, an option over here called Notification Search. That's what we would use to retrieve this right here. So um, that's what it's going to look like. Let me go ahead and select everything. I'll delete it and then I'll start from scratch to show you how it's going to work. Now first of all, this is something that's only going to show you notifications that you are currently subscribed to as the user that you are using Excel with. So if you launch as a Windows user who's not subscribed to anything, you're not going to be able to find anything here. So here's how we would do it. We would specify what we're trying to search for and then how we're going to output that. Now we choose what we want to search for by simply looking for those same three things we've been looking before. Do we want to see just the active ones, just the uh, a specific time range, the recent ones, etc. I'll specify I want to see the last one day. My output cell is defaulting to wherever I was when I first, in, or first uh, clicked on that notification search. So with that as my output cell, I'll go ahead and choose search. Here are the results. If this looks good, if I don't need to make any changes to the format, then I'll just go ahead and say OK. And here's our end result. OK, so I got a certain number of default columns, but as you can see, I can change that all I want. I can change it after the fact uh, by, well, there's a couple of ways. Probably the simplest way to do it, instead of just doing this all over again, is to do a right mouse click and then choose Notification Search again from that uh, drop-down menu there. And when that comes up, uh, now it's going to be pre-populated with what you had configured before. In this case, the recent, the one day, etc. So I can make changes to that if I need to. If I'll switch this over to one hour, I'll get considerably fewer results. And it, uh, it adjusts the, sh the size of the array that's being returned. If you notice, this is actually returning the results into an array, an Excel array. Now you can tell it's an array. You see the little curly brackets there? That's the indicator that this is a set of array results for this function. Even though the contents, if you look at the actual contents, they're the same in each of the, um, each of the cells in that array. And so I, what I'd like to do now is just kind of go over some of those things that uh, we've seen before, but are in a slightly different user interface now. So for example, let me set this back to, I'll go with two days here. Yeah, for example, if I would like to display those contact events, this is how we do it. And you have some choices as you, you know, display them. Do you indent them or not, uh, etc. Uh, if you're going to display those contact events, you'd probably want to put the name of the contact in the actual action that we're reflecting. Now look at the results now. And now we're seeing these two extra columns, contact and action. And of course we're seeing the individual, those, those individual events, those contact events. When I resend things, uh, here's some errors from a web service that's misconfigured. So you know these are the types of uh, contact actions that we see. Now let's go back in. I'll, uh, I'll select anywhere in here. And I can, I can either choose the notification search again, or I can choose this um, notification search up here. And um, as you can see, we pick up what, uh, what we've already uh, configured here. So as I said, that's probably the best way to go about it. And this is where you can control all of the, you know, all of the things that you would normally want to display, all the different columns you'd want to display. Now there's an option here that we haven't looked at yet, this Select Notification Results. You know, this is basically for, um, I guess, the most popular reason for having this here, or the most common reason for uh, using this, is when you want to delete some results. Because watch what happens if you just select a cell and you try to delete. Well, this is because this is the, the typical array behavior within Excel. That's part of an array. I can't delete it. So how do I select it all? Well, if you're real good with Excel, you can do a control shift, down arrow, etc. But anyway, with the easiest way, just right click anywhere, choose select notification results, and then you can go ahead and delete it. And now it's truly gone. Now, 
I've got these two timestamps here. This is a start time and end time. Let me format this a little bit better. Uh, we'll call this the start and the end. Yeah, what I wanted, what I've had these here for is I wanted to show you how you can make cell references uh, to this start time and end time so that you can get yourself a, a nice little engine for an analyzing notifications on the fly just by changing the contents of this. Uh, let me demonstrate. I'll go ahead and here and do a new notification search. But now, instead of choosing uh, just the uh, a specific recent time or active or whatever, I'm going to specify a time range and I'm going to make cell references to this start time and end time. So I'll choose that for the start time. I'll choose that for the end time. And that's my output cell. That's where I had been selected when I first invoked this. I'll go ahead and choose search. Now here are my search results and when I click on OK, it generates an array of the size, you know, that I was interested in going back one day. Watch what happens though if I change this. Instead of one day, let's go back two hours. Now see this is going to update in real time. Okay? If I uh, if I go in here and let's do this search again. I guess it's a little bit more obvious if I were to go ahead and change the display format. Let's add the action and the contact again. I think I've been looking at this with the contact first. That's the person. And so for the search, we'll use that start and end time again. Yeah, so that's two hours of results. Uh, let's, um, let's change that. Watch what happens with this array. And let me maybe move this over and make it a little bigger there. Yeah, watch what happens to this array when I extend this from two hours to say two days. I'll go ahead and change this to two days. And something interesting's happened here. We retrieved or we wanted to retrieve more information, but as you can see, it says down here we need to resize to show all. So what's going on here? Why do I have to do this recalculate resize? Why did I have to do that? If you've got, you know, a situation like what we just saw where we generate an array that's a certain size and then you change the inputs to increase the number of results. So again, let me demonstrate that again. What I had done, I had originally generated this with two hours and I only got one result. Okay. Let me go ahead and resize this to match the results here. With that one result, uh, you notice the array ends right here. But if I if I change this to two days, I do get more results. The array still ends there, but it needs to be larger. So that's why we have this option called uh, resize. And that's going to go ahead and extend that array down. Okay, if I'm working within this notification search user interface here, all those same you know, functionalities that we've seen before are available. So if I go out and do a search and I see something that does require acknowledgement or require comment, etc., I can do that from here. Same as what we've seen in our previous interfaces.